Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to talk about how to get subforms to work in your main forms. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is go look at the subform, and it's this customer subform, customers and sales. Now you'll notice that it presents itself as a data sheet view. In fact, the way that we've hidden a couple rows is right here by, by making them smaller and adjusting the size on, on the main form when we get there to not show those two rows because they're superfluous uh, information. So I'm going to go ahead and close those up like they were before. When I put this in design view, you'll see that this subform is just, is just built like a normal form. Uh, there's really not much uh, rhyme or reason to the placement of any of these fields because the intent of this particular form is to, to be a subform that is uh, shown in datasheet view, so not too concerned about where things are. So the one thing about this, though, is that this field right here that we're going to call text item count, that is a field that is calculated, and it's calculated to count the number of records that appear in that form when it's filtered. So we'll see how this is used in the main form as part of that linkage between the two forms that, that we always want. We either want to sum up the information like the sum of the revenue, sum of sales. If it's an invoice, you want to total up your sales. You might want to compute sales tax. You might want to do several operations on it that link the data and information between each other besides the physical links that the database puts together. In other words, you want to create that logical link that your customers can use and feel like they've got good information from the, the form itself. So this one is a calculation that we're putting here in order to use it in the main form. Now we could have put other calculations like summing up the retail price and so forth. But for our, for our purposes, we can show this right here. Now, understand this is driven by a formula. We're just counting the numbers of product IDs that appear. Okay, so that's the subform. We don't have to give it a fancy label or a caption or anything like that. We really need, only need to make sure that the form is available for the main form when we want to put it onto the main form. So let's come up here to the customer sales form. And I want to go ahead and put this in design view. Because what you'll see here is on this form, you'll see the main information up here. That's taken from a, a source called Query Customer Sales. And if we look at that query, you can see that it's, it's the sales linked to the customer's table and this customer contacts, if it uses any of those. Okay, all that information here, and it's just laid out in the order that we want to use it on the, on the form. The order here really is not critical. Uh, it's just a matter of convenience. A lot of times when we pull the fields onto the form, it's nice to have it all in order. You can just take one and the next one, next one. Um, but it's not essential that it be that way. Okay, so that's the query. And at this point, we're gonna leave it as is, although later on I'm gonna show you why we would want to modify it to make our form work a little bit better. I'm gonna say yes to saving because I move these boxes around a little bit. Now, coming down here, we have the subform. And when we click in this area, there's a few critical things you need to set up to make your subform work. First off, if you're in form design, your subform tool is here. First thing you do is you you click that and draw your subform down on your grid. It will bring up using existing tables or queries or use an existing form. If I say use an existing form, I just show a list of forms here. And what in this case we did was we just click form sub customer sales, like I showed you over here. And then we just click next and we give the form a name, okay? a name that it'll be referred to later if we want to re refer to a field in the form, which of course we will. I told you we were gonna want to refer to that unbound text box that we had there making the calculation. So um, since I'm gonna wanna do that, I'm gonna wanna make note of that name to make sure that I remember it so that I know when I pick the elements that I need for my formula that it's that I know which one it is, okay? So I'm gonna click on finish and it's done. 
I'm going to actually delete this one because of course I've already added it here. Now in design view it shows up here just like it would when I have it in design view by itself. In other words, you're going to see all the fields that are, they're all kind of helter skelter and that's okay um, because when I show it in uh, data sheet view, it lines all up uh, nice like I showed you earlier in the data sheet view. Now with the uh, data over here, what happens when I click on that right there, what happens here is this is where the, the tire hits the road. Now, when you do it with the wizard, it automatically does the master field link field, child field link. Now, what it says here is that I'm going to join the invoice number in the master table, which is the table that supports the form up here, to the invoice number in the child, which is the table that supports this form here. So if we look at this form, it's table sales line items. And if I click on it here, I can invoke a query just to see the fields. And then I'm not gonna save the query, I'm just gonna leave it pointed to the table. So what we're pointing toward is this invoice number. So it's the invoice number that's creating the link between the main form and the sub form. So I'm gonna close this and not save it. And then if we go up to the main form here, it's opened with a query and I've already shown you this query. We're ju we just take the invoice number out of this query and it points to the invoice number down here in the sub, in the sub field as a child, uh, as a child field. Now, the next thing is this unbound text box here. It is an unbound text box and the control source is a formula. So let's take a quick peek at this formula and see what it's doing. First thing it's doing is it's looking at sub F purchases which is the name of this subform. If I click the subform here and get just the, the border around the subform, I see that the name of it is sub F purchases. Okay, this sub F purchases is this part of the equation right here. Then it says dot form, and then it's pointing to the exclamation point text item count. Now, if I do this formula with this expression builder, I can actually pick these items and the syntax will be done for me. What's happening here is this is the real meat of the formula here where it's actually pulling the data from this subform down here, this count of product ID. This field right here, I named text item count. So naming that text item count means that it's taking this data and then ampersand, it's adding parenthesis on the left and the word items within the parenthesis on the right. Okay, so that's my quick and easy formula in my unbound text box. If we take a look at this in uh, regular form view, we see the subform down here and what it's supposed to do is link by the invoice number to the records that belong to that particular invoice. So if we scroll through here though, what, and, the, and you should always do this, you should always check your data and make sure it's flowing well. If I go here to record seven, suddenly, for some reason in this data, I've got an invoice without any line items. So somebody along the way must have created an invoice and then decided to cancel the invoice after they had filled in the header part of the invoice, but not filled in any, any line items. So the invoice was saved, but the line items uh, were not a, a available with it. Well, how do we make sure that we don't send this error message to the users because it's ugly. I mean, it just shows a lack of consistency in your coding. Well, try as I might to capture the error, I found it very difficult with is error and various different ways to, to look at that, to find out and capture the error and then pr just put a zero items in there. I wasn't able to do so, but then I got to thinking, there's no reason for this record to even exist in this form because it's not a true invoice in the respect that there was never any line items, items to it. So without any line items, I thought, well, okay, I can solve this a different way. So let me show you how, how to solve that. If we go to the query that makes this up, what I want to do is take and modify this query. And I wanna modify it by adding a table to it. Um, so sales line items is the table that I need 
and it automatically links by invoice number, but I don't want an inner join link here, just an inner join. What I want to do is exclude anything that is in this main table, but doesn't exist over here. Okay, so in doing that, I can just take and right click this and go to my join properties, include everything from sales, but nothing over here. And then what I want to do is go over here and take this invoice number here and say, my criteria is not no. And if I say that is not no, I'm going to effectively exclude that record number seven because it'll say, I don't have an invoice over here, therefore I'm not going to show the record. And so we have our problem solved. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to save it. I'm going to put my form in design view here and I'm going to scroll forward here to my record seven and see that it skips over record seven and record seven just isn't, isn't there. And now every single record will be there with line items and there won't be those, those bad records. Therefore, I'll always see the correct value in the number of items purchased. I hope this primer about using subforms has helped. If it, if it has, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, be, join us in the channel. And I, frankly, I hope to see you again later. Thanks.